So this one was different. Swipe right for murder was not what I thought it was gonna be. It's weird. I don't know what to say about it, really. We read Derek Millman's first book, Scream All Night, about a B-horror movie studio, and it was weird too. It was over the top, it was zany, it had its serious moments, but as strange as it was, it all worked. Okay, so Swipe Right for Murder has all the same over the top zany elements, but it didn't quite fit together the same way Scream All Night did. We start our story with Aiden, an 18 year old gay kid staying in a hotel in New York City before his family goes on a big trip. Aiden is born and keen on being a little bit self-destructive, so he goes on Dirty Paws, aka Tinder, for a hookup. The first encounter he has is with a guy from school that he knows, and it does not go well and is super awkward. Eager to wipe that encounter from his mind, Aiden goes back on the app and meets with an older guy named Benoit, who keeps talking about an exchange. They hook up, Aiden falls asleep, and then he wakes up in a puddle of blood. Benoit has been shot, and Aiden gets a mysterious phone call from a crazy guy who insists that Aiden is Mr. Preston and that he needs to make the exchange as they agreed. Aiden has no idea what the hell this guy is talking about. And he escapes the hotel, and then he realizes that his entire identity has been switched with Mr. Preston. There's this murderous bellboy stalking the halls, and people are following him. Aiden eventually puts it together that there is a group chasing him, a terrorist group called the Swans, and they're asking about codes, and these Swans have also been murdering people with drones. Thus begins a series of misadventures in which Aiden is either running from the Swans or the police, nearly gets killed a couple of times before he gets to the bottom of what's going on. Eventually Aiden has to figure out what the Swans ultimate terrorist plan is and work to stop them. Along the way, he doesn't get much help from his friends, but he does meet a hot college dude named Shiloh and gets yelled at by his family. The book trundles along to an over-the-top climax that takes place in a theme park. And when we say that the climax is over the top, it's not really just the climax, it's a lot of crazy throughout the book. Like when Aiden has to murder a guy with a paperclip. It was self-defense, but he does it. And I sat there thinking, is it actually possible to murder somebody, like slit their wrists with a paperclip? But that's the kind of book that this book is. It just ramps it up to 11 whenever it can. I personally found the over-the-top moments distracting. They pulled me out of the story too much. It felt a lot like when somebody is describing a crazy dream they had to you, and the weird things just make sense because it's a dream. Whereas the over-the-top moments were my favorite part of the book, I guess it just comes down to what you like. I also thought the story could have benefited from more characters, or at least Aiden needs some better friends. Because when shit goes down and Aiden realizes that there's this huge conspiracy surrounding him, he immediately goes to his friends and they're like, that's crazy, bro. I'm sorry this is happening to you. I'd love to help, but I have an interview for an internship this morning. And it's like number one. Your friend comes to you saying that they're surrounded by this conspiracy and they're being targeted by a terrorist group who thinks they're a hacker named Mr. Preston and you're not immediately like, do you think you might want to go to the doctor? And secondly, like, sure, fine, you believe them. And then you just are like, hey, you know, sorry, but I've got a job interview. I think you can reschedule, sir. He does get some help from a hot guy named Shiloh, though, who just happens to show up at the right exact moment with a towel and a sympathetic ear. And he and Aiden feel a connection, but there's obviously more to him than meets the eye. And he's cute. You like him. He's interesting from what you know about him. He's the second best developed character in the novel. I don't really have anything to say about him. Or anyone else in the story either. Aiden by far is the most interesting character, and thank god because he is the main character. He has a surprisingly dark backstory. His brother died, and his family basically shut down on him. He also came out as gay, and they weren't exactly supportive. And then he had an affair with his friend's dad, which ended badly when the guy broke his heart. And then more bad stuff happened, which spoilers, so he had a lot to deal with. And, in a way, the Swan's agenda as a gay terrorist group does kind of line up with some of Aiden's ideals. I liked how he had to work through his problems, and how much he could easily lose sight of what was right and what was wrong. If he wasn't as strong as he was, he could have joined the Swans. He also has a tendency to make bad choices when it comes to love, he falls for people very easily, and it gets him into a lot of trouble more often than not. Of all the parts of the story, Aiden was the strongest. I want to go into more about the Swans' ultimate terrorist plot of doom, meant to strike fear in the hearts of middle America, but I can't because spoilers. I like their plot. It was weird and zany. And I 
was kind of unimpressed. I do admit though, it was weird and zany. So if you want to hear more about the ending, please check out our spoilers review. So our conclusion on Swipe Right for Murder is that Aiden is good, he's a strong main character, what needs more work is the rest of the story. I found myself skimming a lot because I just wanted to get through this book as fast as possible. The book has long periods where there's not a lot happening in between the action scenes, so it kind of seemed to drag. And I felt that the book was its best self when it really leaned into the weirdness. It's interesting to say the least, I mean it's not something that you're going to forget anytime soon, so even if reading it wasn't what you hoped, it still has staying factor. Derek Millman won us over with Scream All Night, so we will continue to read whatever he puts out. This book just might not be for everyone.